Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover the System.js module format. This is an advanced topic. You don't need to learn it if you're just getting into micro frontends, single spa, or System.js. But for those who are trying to go a bit deeper, hope this helps. To start, let's talk about module formats. What you're looking at here is that on the left we have some code that I wrote, and on the right we have what it's compiled to. We can change the format to be any of these six, and today we're talking about the system.js format. So here we are doing an export default, and over here on the right, you'll see that we're doing an export default, but it's a little bit different. So this is what a module format is. It's a way of expressing the imports and the exports for a JavaScript file. We're going to go over the system.js module format by looking at this code example. And we're going to start with this 2.js file. So the first thing to know is that the 2.js file is a single JavaScript module. So it still is one file is one module. We're going to go line by line. First off, we have system.register. System.register is a function that we are calling. And it assumes that system is a global variable that is available to us. And so normally that global variable exists because we load system.js as a script tag. So we're calling into this global variable system and calling the register function saying we're registering a module. The next part is the arguments that we're passing into the system.register function. The first one is the array of dependencies. You can see here that this list of dependencies is completely empty. The next example that we're going to look at has some dependencies, but this one is more simple and just has no dependencies. A dependency is when you import something from another file. And so this 2.js file, it's not importing any other files. The next part is this function. The purpose of this function is to return what is called a register object or a declare object. You can see that we're returning that object here on line three. And that register object or declare object is an important part of how we're going to define all of our dependencies, all of our exports, and how we even instantiate the code. You can also see that we have an export function and this context object that are being passed in. And so system.js calls our function and it gives us these two things, an export function and a context object. A module goes through a couple phases during its life cycle. It starts off in a linking phase and then it moves on to an instantiating phase. The linking phase is when all of the dependencies are given to the module and the instantiating phase is when the code is executed for that module. Since this module does not have any dependencies, the linking phase is very simple. We're not really doing anything inside of it. And you can see here in our returned register object, we have an execute function. That execute function is called by system.js when it is time to instantiate the module. You can see that what we're doing inside of our execute function is exporting default to. So what this means is we are exporting a property onto our module object that is called default. So this is similar to what we had over here, the more familiar export default syntax. This is the system.js way of doing that. The two is just the value that we are exporting. It could be any value. It could be a string, a number, a function, anything else. Um, a shorthand with the export function is to actually provide an object where each value, each property in the object is something that will be exported onto our module. But for now, we're just doing the simple export where we're exporting the default export and setting it to two. The last part of this is the context object. The context object is equivalent to import.meta. So you might have seen that you can use import.meta inside of JavaScript code now. 
in system.js, that import.meta object is this context or underscore context object that's passed in by system.js. We'll look at we'll look at it in more detail a little bit later, but just be aware that that's what it is. It is the import.meta. Okay, so now let's look at this code executing in the browser. So in this tab, I'm going to call system.import 2.js, and we'll see a few console logs, and we'll also see our export working. Here we go. So you can see that it downloaded the 2.js file, it linked it, and then it instantiated it. Additionally, our console logs happened. So here's the console log that we had for the context. We can see that this is an object that has an import function, a meta property, and a resolve um, function, also this URL. And so the import function here is for importing other modules relative to the current module, meaning that 2.js is a file in some directory. If we want to load from another file in a directory relative to the 2.js file, we can use this context.import in order to do so. Here we can see context.meta. This is what I was referring to before with import.meta. And we can see that there's a URL property. This tells us the URL of the current JavaScript module that's being executed, in our case, 2.js. Additionally, there is a resolve function. The resolve function will let us see the full URL for any module. This particular resolve function on our context.meta is bound with a parent URL of the current module's URL. So this full URL for 2.js is the parent URL that will be used when we're resolving. Parent URL refers to how do you deal with relative URLs like dot slash. When you see a dot slash, you have to have a parent URL to know where is that relative to. And this resolve function is bound such that it will always be relative to this 2.js file. Okay, so that's the basics of the system.register format. Again, we are creating a module object by exporting some things in it. There's a linking phase, an instantiating phase. There's this context object that is similar to import and import.meta. Um, and these are, these are the basics. The next file that we're going to look at is slightly more complicated because it has a dependency. So I've switched over to this 1.js file. Here in 1.js, you can see that our array of dependencies is not empty like it was in the 2.js file. Here we are saying, I have a dependency on 2.js. So this is saying, please download the 2.js file and link it and instantiate it and create a module object. And then once you have that module object, I need that as a dependency. You can see inside of our linking phase, we're creating this two variable. And then down here is where we are setting it. This whole part with setters is the new part. And it is something that we didn't have inside of 2.js because we did not have any dependencies. So again, the whole object that we are returning is a register object. And there's an execute part and a setters part now. The setters part is an array of functions. Each function in the array represents one of our dependencies. In our case, we only have one dependency on another file. And that function is given the namespace object or module object of our dependencies. In other words, this ns variable is the 2.js module object. And system.js will call our setter for the 2.js module uh, before it executes. So it will link all of the dependencies together before it executes or instantiates our 1.js file. So here we're just storing the two, we're just storing the namespace or module object into this two variable so that we can use it later down here inside of execute. In micro frontends, this is often used for Webpack externals. 
where anything that's external will have a setter that will be called with a dynamic runtime module object. The rest of this file is familiar from what we saw from the 2.js file. We're not calling export anywhere, but we are looking at the context object. Now going to import 1.js, and let me refresh the page first so that we can see all of the console logs that happen from it. You can see that we're linking the modules, then we're instantiating them. We can see that uh, the setter for linking the two module object into the one module is um, being called. And we can see that here we're inside of the one.js file and we were successfully able to import the two.js file and see the default export with its value of two. If we take a quick look at the network tab, we will see that 1.js and 2.js were downloaded as separate files. The last thing that I wanted to share here is that this rollup JS REPL is a good way to learn the system.register format. Additionally, there is some documentation about it, which will be in the link below. I'm also opening it up right here. Here it is, system.register. So here you can learn more about it. And then finally, um, the reason why you don't usually need to learn much about this is because it is created by Webpack or by Rollup. And so usually we write the code here on the left and then our bundlers and compilers do this on the right. However, knowing what this is doing might be helpful if you're running into issues in the browser and you're trying to understand what does that compiled bundle actually doing. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.